Arithmetic geometry, the field which applies algebraic geometry to problems in number theory, blending geometry with algebra. But how can you do so? We need to take a small step back and start with something that looks simple, but it's not. The right triangle. We know that the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides. This can be written as an equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This theorem has been proven in many different ways, and we won't go into it here. What's important to note is that there are infinitely many solutions to this equation. This is because we can use these formulas, which generate all primitive Pythagorean triples, so triples where a, b, and c are co-prime, in other words, have no common factors other than 1, where m and n are positive integers, m is greater than n, which is greater than 0. And they also have opposite parity, one is even and the other is odd. Beyond that, m and n are co-prime. By substituting different values of m and n, we can get different examples. When m equals 2 and n equals 1, the result is 3, 4, 5. When m equals 3 and n equals 2, the result is 5, 12, 13. When m equals 4 and n equals 1, the result is 15, 8, 17. Now, let's change that equation a little bit and insert a 7 in there. We'll replace a, b, and c with x, y, and z. What we'll do with just this simple equation will demonstrate the essential ideas we need of arithmetic geometry. The only difference between this equation and the Pythagorean equation is that the coefficient 1 was replaced with 7. This small adjustment is a feature of arithmetic geometry, and it shows that small changes of this kind can produce drastic effects. We want to show that x squared plus y squared equals 7z squared has no solution in non-zero rational numbers x, y, and z. Rational numbers, meaning numbers of the form p over q, where p and q are integers, with q not zero. So, there are no sets of non-zero rational numbers that make x squared plus y squared equals 7z squared true. The equation is a Diophantine equation, a type of equation where we seek integer or rational solutions. If no such rational solutions exist, the equation is unsolvable in rational numbers. Now, suppose x, y, and z are rational numbers that satisfy the equation. Will we get a contradiction? If n is the least common denominator of x, y, and z, we can write that x equals a over n, y equals b over n, and z equals c over n, such that a, b, c, and n are integers. Now, original equation has become this. By multiplying n squared, it becomes a squared plus b squared equals 7c squared. If these have a common factor m, we're able to replace them by a over m, b over m, and c over m, and the new equation a squared plus b squared equals 7c squared still holds for these new numbers. We may therefore suppose that a, b, and c are integers with no common factor. Now here's something interesting we can do. Arithmetic geometry frequently uses the local to global principle. Meaning that by checking solutions in modulo 7, so the local property, we deduce global consequences. If no solutions exist in modulo 7, then no integer solutions exist globally. Here, we will reduce the equation modulo 7. By reducing modulo 7, we can check whether the equation is even consistent within this modular system. Again, if no solutions exist in modulo 7, there can be any integer or rational solutions in general. The reduction modulo 7 is natural here because the coefficient 7 appears explicitly in 7c squared. Quickly, modular arithmetic is basically reducing our available numbers to a certain value called the modulus, in our case 7. So 5 plus 6 equals 4. And this can be done for any operation, multiplication, subtraction, etc. Since 7 is divisible by 7, we know that 7 is equivalent to 0 in module 7. So for 7c squared, 
no matter what c squared is, the product 7 c squared is still divisible by 7, which means 7 c squared is equivalent to 0 module 7. Now, the equation becomes a bar squared plus b bar squared equals 0, module 7, where a bar and b bar are the reductions of a and b module 7. Now we only have seven possibilities of a bar and seven possibilities of b bar. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. So the analysis of the solutions of a bar squared plus b bar squared equals zero module seven amounts to checking the 49 choices of a bar and b bar and seeing which ones satisfy the equation. If you actually calculate it, you'll find that the only solution to the equation is if everything equals zero. Saying a bar equals zero, and similarly b bar equals zero, means that a and b leave no remainder when divided by seven. This is exactly the same as saying that a and b are both multiples of seven. When this is true, it means that a squared and b squared are multiples of 49. It follows that their sum, 7c squared, is a multiple of 49 as well. Therefore, c squared is a multiple of 7. And this implies that c itself is a multiple of 7. Specifically, a, b, and c share a common factor of 7. This is a contradiction of something we said earlier, that in the equation a squared plus b squared equals 7c squared, we suppose that a, b, and c are integers with no common factor. But here we just proved that they actually have a common factor. Because of this contradiction, we have to conclude that there is not, in fact, any solution to x squared plus y squared equals 7z squared, consisting of non-zero rational numbers. In general, the determination of rational solutions to a polynomial equation like this is called a Diophantine problem. We were able to dispose of the equation pretty quickly, but that turns out to be the exception. In general, Diophantine problems are usually very hard to solve. For instance, we might modify the exponents in x squared plus y squared equals 7z squared and consider the equation x to the power of 5 plus y to the power of 5 equals 7z to the power of 5. I don't actually know whether it has any solutions in non-zero rational numbers, but you can be sure that it would be a piece of work. And it's even possible that the most powerful techniques available to us today are not enough to answer this simple question. Fermat's last theorem is an example. The primary question, whether x squared plus y squared equals 7z squared, has non-zero rational solutions is a classic Diophantine problem, central to arithmetic geometry. Techniques such as modular arithmetic and properties of divisibility, so 7z squared implies that z is divisible by 7, demonstrate how local properties, so for example modulo primes, influence global conclusions, so the non-existence of rational solutions. By the way, though it's not obvious so far, the solution of Diophantine problems is classified as part of geometry because their solutions can be interpreted as points on a geometric object, which is why this entire thing is called arithmetic geometry. Technically speaking, our equation defines a quadratic curve, specifically a conic section in the projective plane p squared. Finding rational or integer solutions to the equation is equivalent to finding rational points on this curve. However, the failure of the equation to have non-zero rational number solutions corresponds to the non-existence of rational points. We can essentially throw our geometric intuition in the trash when solving it. This is an example of the principle often referred to as geometry without geometry, where the tools of arithmetic and algebra are sufficient to fully address the problem, making classical geometric interpretation unnecessary. If we had an equation like x squared plus y squared equals 1, we would find that it has infinitely many rational solutions but geometrically, it describes a circle in real numbers. Although we solved the problem over the integers and rationals, meaning that we were constrained to these specific number systems, the equation can be analyzed over other algebraic structures, like finite fields. The equation x squared plus y squared equivalent to 0 module 7 has no solutions except when x is equivalent to y, which is equivalent to 0. 
or polynomials with complex coefficients, where solutions can be parametrized as x of t, y of t, and z of t, linking arithmetic and geometry in a broader sense. In order to understand the Ophentin problems better, we would need to delve into rings and schemes in algebraic geometry. So, if you guys would like to know more, please let us know in the comment section below. But this gives us an intuition behind what algebraic geometry is all about and what it deals with. This video was based on the Princeton Companion to Mathematics. Link in the description. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.